Oh, hi there. You just caught me reading my brand new book, Twin Peaks Unwrapped. The book, me and my co-host Ben Durant wrote this last year and is now finally out at bluerosebag.com. Supplies are very limited, so you gotta get yours today. This book contains over 100 interviews with cast and crew, community commentary, and of course, us. For example, here are some of the fine folks you'll find in this wonderful book. Krista Bell, Charlotte Stewart, David Patrick Kelly, Jim Belushi, John Neff, Scott Frost, Cheryl Lee, Matthew Lillard, and the one, the only, Kyle McLaughlin. So get your copy today at bluerosemag.com and don't be left out. Now please, I must go back to reading my own book and tending to my fire. Oh, that fire is damn hot. Ooh, my socks are on fire. Welcome to Twin Peaks Season 3 Madness. Uh, they will, we will determine the best part of Season 3 of all time according to us. Today's show is sponsored by BlueRoseMag.com, where you can get your copy of Twin Peaks Unwrapped, the book, among other Twin Peaks related books like Conversations with Mark Cross by David Bushman and Issues 13 and 14 of Blue Rose Mag. And you should definitely pre-order Laura's Ghost, Women Speak About Twin Peaks by Courtney Stalling with a very special forward by Cheryl Lee. So please check out bluerosemag.com today. Now, before I introduce today's panel, I would like to recap all the past winners. Lynch Madness went to Lost Highway. Season one of Twin Peaks went to, season, uh, went to episode two, Zen or the skill to catch a killer. And season two of Twin Peaks went to episode 22, Beyond Life and Death. And today, we take a new journey into season three, Madness. On today's panel, we have one of the coolest cats in the Twin Peaks community. He currently can be heard on his new podcast with his co-host, John Thorne, In Our House Now. And you can also hear him talking about all the shows you should be watching with co-host Scott Ryan on the Red Room podcast. Welcome, Mr. Joshua Minton. Thank you, gentlemen. Always an honor to be here. I appreciate the invite. Next on the panel is a fellow Twin Peaks fanatic that needs no introduction because he has been on this managed journey since the very beginning. You can check out his latest videos on Twin Peaks and support him on Patreon at lostinthemovies.com, Mr. Joel Bacco. Well, I'm just oh, no, much better, much better. We can well, hear the, the headphone was plugged in, so I guess it doesn't work. Don't mm. worry about the headphones, Joel. But thank you for being on today's show. We'll make it work. <laughs> we'll make it work. You're good. You're fine. I got one more option. And finally, the man that brought us all together with this crazy idea of doing a podcast about Twin Peaks that would set up a five-year run and writing a book together. Get your copy today at bluerosemag.com. My co unwrap the book. Yep. My co-host and one of my closest friends, Mr. Ben Durant. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been much too long since we've done this. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and before we get started, I'd like to tell the audience how today's show will work. 
each side is organized according to an episode's ratings. Higher rated episodes are matched against lower rated episodes. And you might ask yourself, where did you get the ratings from? Well, that's from IMDb's user rating system. Um, and because this is the first time we'll be doing a video version of this episode, I will have the bracket on the screen for everyone to see, which is something totally new for us, which I'm gonna do that right now. Now, gentlemen, we are gonna let the madness begin. So- Let's do it. All right, round one, round one, which is gonna be going right here. We have part 12, which part 12 is the episode where Diane basically uh, joins the Blue Rose Task Force. We finally see Audrey. Uh, it was a big episode, I thought. Um, and then we have part 16, which as you see has a 9.6 rating. 16, I think is the, it is the episode Cooper wakes up, where um, Cooper wakes up from his coma or being Dougie into a coma then wakes up. Uh, so this was another big episode. Uh, uh, Josh, who has, not, who has not done this yet. Josh, I'm gonna let you go first. What is your choice between part 12 and part 16? I'm gonna go with part 16 on this one. Now, after we all vote, do we talk about why we voted? Yes, yes. Should I do that now or do that, wait yeah. until everyone? Yeah, do that now, yeah. Tell us why, why 16 over 12? So 16, in my opinion, has one of the biggest releases of any episode in The Return. And I would just want to say it's really hard to pick my favorite episodes of The Return because I, I intend and look at it as one thing anymore. So I'm kind of looking at different movements, different emotional movements along this 18 hour journey. And in this episode, Audrey also wakes up. <clears throat> the theme of our recent podcast is all about Audrey. So not only does Diane get the all text message, she runs to confess that Cooper raped her and tries to murder Gordon Cole. And then, you know, Cooper says goodbye to Sonny Jim and, 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 Janie E to go off to, to battle. There is a ton of emotional release inside of this episode, and I just feel like it, it's very rewarding from a, an emotional perspective. So that's why I chose that. I, I do agree. That, I mean, it, this, these, this is a tough one. All right, we're going to go to a Joel Bacco. I will also go with part 16. Uh, I think yeah, there's a lot of excitement and fascinating developments going on in there. I think for me, the strongest, most interesting part of the episode is the stuff with Diane. Uh, the Cooper scene has always struck me as a little odd. I kind of, I appreciate it in sort of, um, I, I think it's a little self-conscious in a way that I kind of like where he's playing up to the fans desires to see Cooper finally after 16, after 16 episodes. Yeah. But it feels a little hollow to me, which apparently it doesn't to other people. Most people seem to just kind of love it straight out, but I don't quite feel like we're getting, I feel like we're getting a little bit of an ironic hero's return in there for some reason. So that's not necessarily a criticism. I think it's interesting, but mm -hmm. just have a little bit of a different response to that one. Well, and part 12, I think is just, it was, kind of weak to me. There's some really interesting stuff in there with Sarah. Um, and I do actually like the Audrey scene that uh, is pretty controversial where she finally comes back with Charlie. But overall, it's not one of the stronger episodes in the series, in my opinion. Fair enough. All right. So part 16 moves on. But Ben, um, do you have anything about this or no? Yeah, real quick. I mean, I would have said the same thing. I am the FBI. I mean, that is, I do like the whole Cooper waking up and you got the theme music and he's kind of like, you know, Cooper's back and he's ready to go. So yeah, that one's definitely better. And I, I agree with Joel. I think 12 is actually maybe one of the weaker episodes. And actually, the, again, the, the same thing. I like the Audrey stuff in 12 that you kind of say, what's going on with Audrey? And there's this weird kind of thing with her husband. But yeah, it's definitely the stronger episode. I agree. It's, Part 16. Well, one thing about 12, I do love the roadhouse scene. That's the one with Trick where he almost gets run off the road. That, that's in 12. That's huh. actually, actually my favorite roadhouse scene of all of that we see. Which all one right. was the one in 12? That's the one where Trick almost got oh, run yeah. off the road. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> now, so, is part 16 the highest rated of the entire series on I IMDb? Think, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, interesting. 
Um, Very interesting. We're going to move on to, uh, round, we're still in round one. We're going to do part five, which got an 8.2, up against part 17. Uh, part five, for a quick reminder, I believe is when Mr. C's in jail. Uh, uh, Dougie gets a lot of coffee in the office. He sees the statue. Um, uh, Shelly and Norma bond over um, Shelly's daughter being with a jackass because um, she's borrowing money, I believe. Um, so, I mean, not a lot much happened in part five. Uh, up against part 17. Um, and real quickly, 17, I mean, it's the second to last episode. This is like Freddie Sykes gets to beat up Bob with his green glove. A lot of things happen. Uh, it's a very exciting episode. Um, we're going to go um, with Joel first on this one. Well, uh, I see part eight or part five is the second lowest rated of the whole series. I'm guessing part 17 is going to trounce it here. I love part five. To me, part five is one of the top three episodes of the whole series. I think it's hugely underrated. I think it's where Twin Peaks, The Return, comes alive as a TV show, like a weekly TV show for the first time. It's literally the first episode that we got a weekly installment for. The other ones were double headers. And it's just, it's got such a rich, open, beautiful spirit, I think. The scene where um, the uh, Becky gets into the car and she's on the drugs, she looks up and the music plays. Glorious, one of the most gloriously um, sort of Mulholland, Mulholland Drive-esque scenes that Lynch has directed since Mulholland Drive. I mean, we, we hardly see anything like that elsewhere in this episode. I think all the Dougie Cooper stuff is wonderful. I think some of the early chapters of that story where he's kind of gambling in Vegas, they're very fun, but they're very kind of, there's a sort of a dryness to it. And it really warms up and opens up when he goes to work. Uh, there's just this whole world that's kind of created there uh, as he kind of wanders around with his green jacket, just visually some of the some of the coolest stuff. And we get that song Windswept for the first time, the Johnny Jewel track, where Cooper's touching the shoe of the statue. Probably my favorite ending of any of these uh, episodes. I just, I love that song. I love the whole mood of it that it evokes. I love the scene where Cooper, Mr. C, is on all of the surveillance cameras, and they got the stuff blaring, and he says... Uh, the cow jumped over the moon. We get to see <laughs> Philip. We get to see Philip Jeffries or a box that may be Phil connected to Philip Jeffries in Argentina. This episode, to me, I've been enjoying the series up to that this point. But this is where I said this is just blossoming into all of these fantastic different directions. And I feel like, oh, the scene with Richard, where he's like comes off like a young Frank Booth, and he's just kind of terrifying. Like that's actually yeah. I think Richard's best scene. After that, he just becomes a little it all becomes a little too over the top for me, but that one he's really menacing and threatening and, uh, and, and there's like an edgy kind of uh, excitement to it that I don't think we get elsewhere. So I just think this episode is tremendous. Hopefully I maybe gave somebody a little push for it, but I won't be surprised if it loses right at the outset here. Wow, so part five. Absolutely, wow. yeah. Wow, part five. All right, we're gonna go to Ben. Ben, what do you got? Well, with part five, what I like is that uh, Dougie goes to work, his whole thing about you're lying, and like there's still the essence of Cooper in there. And the whole Shelly and Norma, to be able to see them together, worried about Shelly's uh, daughter, is great scenes. But it's got to be part 17 for me. The idea that everybody's come together at the sheriff's station, and, and then it moves on to... Um, Cooper going into this other world and trying to save Laura and ending with Julie Cruz's singing and stuff. It's just such, to me, that's like classic Twin Peaks. So it, I'm definitely going with part 17. I love it. I love it. So uh, Josh, you're Hi the breaker. breaker. Joel and I are about to shock the world because part, oh my five, God. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. part five is the superior episode by what? far for wow. all the reasons that Joel laid out there. Oh my I'm going to throw a few more in there. It's the Mike Nelson scene where he interviews Steven <laughs> and this yeah. is one of the funniest scenes in the entire show. But, and, and John and I have talked about this, that interaction where Mike had a choice of showing Steven kindness or showing him cruelty. He showed him cruelty 
Mm. And that sent Steven down a path that, that helped all the dominoes fall inside of Twin Peaks. So what mm. happens with Richard Horn and Steven in this episode is a soul corruption that essentially collapses the, the world of Twin Peaks in, in this entire narrative. So uh, that all starts right here. Jacoby's podcast for the first time Oh, is, I forgot about that. Is golden. That is a beautiful moment. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the other things that, uh, that I mean, there's so much that happens in this episode. Yeah. Um, the Mitchum brothers, we inter- were introduced to the Mitchum brothers. They beat the crap out of the, mich- the, the casino guy. And like, these are mm-hmm. the people that are after Cooper. Hmm. How in the world is he going to survive this? So all these dark forces are starting to align. And I guess it's just the kid in me that loved Empire Strikes Back the best. Hmm. I feel like this is an episode that I could live in over and over and over again. Wow. So five, five is my choice. I like 17, but 17 is a lie it, to me. It's a, it's a lie inside the narrative, and I don't like to spend a lot of time inside of a lie. So <laughs> I wow. guess I'm, I run away from that. That's I, fascinating. I wow. thought 17 <laughs> was going to go uh, get to, near the end there. I, I we're, oh, gonna... we're already in a controversial yep. uh, I star. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I got to say – I'll say real quick, because I thought I was going to get a chance to talk about it again. I just assumed, so I didn't even mention it. I, I do like part 17. I think the Bob stuff is ridiculous, but <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Um, and I think it's, in te- I mean, by the time it gets to the directing stage, it's clearly intended to be ridiculous, like just all, right. everything about it. So I kind of get that. In a way, it almost feels like it's spoofing some of the stuff in the original series where they mm. resolve Bob a little too neatly. And I love the fact that, I love, love, love the fact that Lynch kind of forced people to grapple with Firewalk with me. And Frost, too, because Frost probably had as much to do with anybody about this decision. But forcing them to grapple with Firewalk with me and, like, rewatch it. And I love how he re-edits it um, so that now it's black and white, the music is removed, and it's like a whole different experience of the exact same footage. Like, I think he used the same takes and everything from the film, just desaturated without uh, without music and it's, it's kind of fascinating in that regard move on to round two this is the meat the meat right here um so part six we're gonna go part six which got a point an 8.3 up against part 16 which we already voted on Part six, just so everybody at home remembers, this is the episode where um, I think we first meet Red. We meet Red, and then we barely see him ever again, but he does the magic <laughs> trick. Um, uh, Truman's uh, wife comes in, nagging him about something. Um, uh, we have, oh, we have the two thugs. They get the money um, from Janie. The, the, she, she pays them off, and she has her big monologue against them. Um, also, I believe Hawk finds the pages in the doorway of the bathroom in the sheriff's apartment. So a lot does happen in part six. So six and 16, we're going to start with Ben. Ben. Wow, you're starting with me. You know, I wrote something before we uh, started this, and now I'm like debating here which one I like better. (laughs) Isn't that something? I think I like them both a lot. Oh man, I didn't. I wasn't expected that I was going to go first. I should have realized that I was going to be the first one to go. You want here. me to go uh, someone else? You need no, a no, no. I got, I got to man up and uh, make a decision here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. You know what? I, I can't believe I'm going to do this, but um, I think I'm going to go with part six, and I'm going to go with part six. It's the first time we see Diane, which was a great thing to wait 25 years or so to actually get to see Diane. I, I mean, there's that whole hit and run with the uh, with this, the kid, which is emotional and uh, unbelievable. And, and, and am I, yeah, uh, and what else is, and, and I love the whole Janie E, what kind of world do we live in? And that whole, like, the 1% kind of thing is like, and it's so true to the, today in our own society, is like, why can't we treat people better? So, I mean, I think for all those reasons, the way the, the emotion, all in one episode, it's just a great, it's a great part. So that's what I'm going with, part six. Part six. six. All right, we're going to go to uh, Josh. So I, I also respect many parts of part six, um, Janie E as well. Uh, it is not my favorite episode. I actually find this to be one of the weaker 
times of, of the return. So I am going to stick with part 16, but I will say that I do adore the scene with Carl Rod where he, mm. you know, witnesses the ascension of whatever that is, whatever that spirit is out of the kid. I find that to be a comforting scene when I rewatch it and the rest of the episode is pretty dark. So that's a, uh, that is something that's laudable and worth talking about, but I still think part 16 is the stronger. Wow, I love it. We're wow. tied already, tied again. And Joel Bacco, what do you got for us? Uh, I'm gonna tie break in favor of part 16. And I think part six is solid. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. I think it's a thought provoking episode, but the previous part five to me is much more visceral and exciting. But part six, some of the parts, the hit and run, I sort of have mixed feelings about. Um, it doesn't totally transport me, um, but it's interesting. And, and uh, I think it's a worthy episode, but part 16. Also, I think it's an interesting juxtaposition of part six, where we meet Diane. She turns around as this iconic image. Finally, we mm. get to see Diane Laura Dern. But part 16 takes us so much further, where she's breaking down. We find out she's some sort of tulpa. She's mm. a victim. She's a, a potential killer. She's a traitor. She's, they're betraying her. It's, there's mm. so many levels of emotional complexity there. And Great Laura point. Dern just knocks it out of the park. Very good point. Nice. Love it. All right. We're moving on to part 10, which got an 8.3 rating, up against part 11, which has got a 9.1 rating. Uh, part 10 um, is, is an amazing episode, I think. Um, you have, I'm going to rattle off some things real quick. Uh, Mitchum brothers have a plan. I believe he gets hit in the eye by Candy in this episode. Uh, we get a call from the log lady. Um, the woman who sees the hit and run, uh, Richard going speeding gets beat up because he's afraid she's going to tell the police. Um, Albert goes on a date. And, you know, uh, Gordon Cole and, um, uh, I was going to say Krista Bell. I can't, why am I brain farting? Hey, Kristen? Them? Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they kind of watch it from afar. We got the girls. Um, oh, we see Johnny Horn for the first time, but his mom gets beat up by Richard. Um, up against part 11. Did I say, yeah, part 11, which mm. I know you guys know probably all this, but this is more for the people listening. Um, Part 11 is a, has one of the, a very sweet scene with, with the uh, casino girl uh, woman showing up and seeing um, uh, Dougie at the restaurant and saying all these wonderful things and they're, they're giving him pie because the Mitchum brothers get the money. Um, so that's like the big moment in that episode. Um, so we're going to start off uh, with Joel. I can pretty easily choose part 11 on this one. I think it's a roller coaster ride of an episode. The first half is just like nonstop thrills and, and kind of stress and, and uh, energy. And I just, this is one of the episodes I have the strongest memories of watching the first time just on the edge of my seat. And I think I was actually watching it with my parents and my dad made it. My mom left, I think when the guy's head blew up or something, you know, that was her out. And then my dad made it all the way to the kid getting sick in the car and leaning up and bubbling out all the vomit. And he was like, ah, and he ran out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was just such a, a memorable experience to sit through that. I think part 10 is, is fine. There's a lot of nice, interesting things about it. I remember really anticipating that one because it was called Laura is the one and thinking, oh, this is going to be a big, something big is going to happen here. But really... Um, the only thing was that one scene, which I like a lot, where her, they kind of take her face from Firewalk with me and they put it in the door like it's King Kong or something. And uh, Gordon Cole is staring up at it. So other than that, it, it didn't uh, reveal that much about Laura or really that much of anything. It was more sort mm. of Richard and the Mitchums and good stuff, but not, not a standout of episode in the way part 11 is. Fair enough. All right, Ben, we're going to you next. So with, with part 10, you have that whole candy and the fly, which is, was an accident because uh, a really an actor got hurt and stuff. And I love that whole um, Lynch does things because of accidents and goes with it. And you have the whole Johnny and his 
bear and Richard beating up his grandmother. But you know, I love part 11 and I love part 11 because it's, there's so many slow, great moments with, um, with the Mitchum brothers eating cereal and uh, D Dougie delivers the uh, box and that, that great moment of the box and what's in the box and what is it? Cherry pie. And then they, they get to the restaurant and they have, and it's, it's just a beautiful moment. And, you know, I, I think it's, I mean, I mean, yeah, there's just so much to say about this. It just, it just, it, they took their time in this episode, but there's just these little beautiful moments of the piano playing and, and, and Dougie looking up and, <laughs> I don't know. I love. I I would have to go with part eleven. Part eleven. All right. So part eleven gets it. What um, was it, what was Josh gonna do? Though? Uh, well, yeah, Josh. Uh, any thoughts about this before we move on? So it was a full sweep. Uh, my choice was gonna be part eleven as well. But I I do want to say about part ten. This has one of my favorite scenes. Uh, I have so many in the return, but this is where Janie E seduces Cooper. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, I feel and being a married man, I've been married almost twenty years. It's very rare that my wife looks at me like that and acts like that. <laughs> so I really appreciated that. No, and, and it's so sweet. I mean, it's just, a, it's one of the few first moments where this light pours out of Dougie Jones, Cooper is Dougie Jones, and it starts to change the people around him and the, and the world around him. And I, I adore Margaret's uh, little soliloquy there to Hawk, uh, where she tells him that space, you know, you need to pay attention to the dream. It's going to come flowing out like a river, uh, that which is and is not. And so like, I feel like that's a really important thing for the viewer to hear that which is and that which is not right then, because what's about to happen, some stuff may be real, some stuff may not be real. Both are equally valuable pay attention to what's mm. happening. Um, so that's, that's, I think, really important as well. The fire walk with me stuff, super important because, you know, I'm, I may cause some controversy here, but I don't believe that fire walk with me is a prequel. I think it's a sequel to season two and it's the beginning of Cooper's dream that we see culminate in part 18. So when Gordon looks back to the beginning, he's seeing all the way back to the beginning of the dream, at least that's how I interpret it. Hmm. So that scene is super important um, to, to a reading that, um, you know, that I feel like it's the dream theory. Part 11 though, that ending of part 11 with the cherry pie in Santino's where the piano player's mm. playing, it just the release. And it's the first time that, that Cooper's goodness has truly changed the, the world around him. Two people that had a gun at his head, but yet it intervened. Like, right. you know, the, the goodness intervened and changed the world. And I think it's such a strong statement that um, it's, it's undeniable that that is the superior episode. So and the cas three. casino sl casino slot woman who comes by and says that he you yes. know, Dougie changed his life her life as well and that she's reunited with her son and that's a beautiful moment. It really is. All right, so we're moving on. Part eleven moves on, but we're moving on to one of the bigger ones that I'm very excited to do this one. Part eight, which is only an eight point five uh, for a rated, and part, up against part fifteen, which is an eight point eight rated. Um, Part eight, I don't need to say anything. The bomb happens. Nine Inch Nails performs. We all, we know everything that happens in that episode. Um, 15 for everyone, just in case you forgot. Norma and uh, Big Ed reunite and have a magical moment. Probably one of my favorite moments. Um, you also see, we see uh, Mark Frost reprise his role as uh, the reporter. Um, we have more Audrey stuff about leaving the house um and nadu is put in a jail cell for safekeeping um so we're gonna start off with uh josh for this one this is a tough one it really is uh but the contrarian in me is going to come out on this one and i'm picking part 15 as the superior episode wow uh, because part 15 but well both episodes are all about release Okay, so in, in my mind, you know, it's part eight has been called by even Mark Frost as a kind of an origination story of some type. I believe it's the corruption of the soul, you know, the soul of the dreamer, whoever you believe the dreamer is. And then part 15, on the other hand, is a series of emotional releases beginning with, you know, Nadine, Ed, Norma. Um, even poor Walter got released and I'm sure it's not the way he wanted to. Uh, then we have um, Janie E 
you know, Cooper sticks the fork into the, the socket after Janie e feeds him the chocolate cake. The log lady <laughs> dies. I mean, so that's a huge one. And then Audrey and her husband are on the threshold of the house, finally ready to leave. And there's this huge emotional rage that she releases all over him. And then, of course, the final uh, release of the, the girl who's picked up out of the booth in the roadhouse, thrown to the floor, or set on the floor, and she's crawling and screaming. And that's the last time we see anybody in the roadhouse except for Audrey and, hmm. and that, that next episode. So I just feel like the, the emotional satisfaction I get from the releases in, in episode 15 or part 15 are superior for me than what I got out of part eight, though I love them both. I, I can't argue with you at all on that. I totally agree with that. It's that's a tough one. Aren't you um, only partial? Because you're not even part of you're not even part of this panel. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm just saying I, I, I he makes such a compelling argument. How could you argue against that? Um but Joel, what do you got? I'll argue against that. <laughs> I think part fifteen has. I agree with a lot of the stuff he said about it. Um, you know, I think you could make a case if you were looking at what contributes the most to the Twin Peaks narrative, etc. You could actually make a compelling case that part fifteen contributes more than part eight. But part eight, to me, is a masterpiece of filmmaking, and that is the most important. To be honest, as far as what I'm going to rank in this, uh, it's up there with some of the greatest films I've ever seen of all time is just self-contained work of art. Uh, I do think it does bring some really interesting elements and, and juxtapositions to Twin Peaks as a whole, um, more than almost any other part of the, of the new series. Uh, I think maybe with the exception of some stuff in part 18 and 17 and 17 and 18 together. And uh, some of the stuff with Diane, maybe in part 16, but um part and maybe some of the early stuff but we'll get to that part eight is just a unbelievable piece of television and cinema i'll never forget watching it for the first time uh at the risk of sounding corny it blew me away so <laughs> definitely part eight so ben you got yourself a quite the job here to unbreak this tie i do um gosh um I think part eight is a masterpiece. It makes me think of Space Odyssey. I mean, it's just, it's an awe. It's, it's one of Lynch's finest works for a visual, incredible, amazing. But, but I would go with part 15. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> because wow. I, think, wow. I, know, I think everybody Killing listening me. right now is going to be like, how dare he not go with part eight? But part 15 is like, when I think about Twin Peaks, like this is called Twin Peaks. Like I think about the characters. I think about Ed and Norma. I think about, I think about the log lady dying. I think about the characters and Dougie, you know, wake kind of starting to wake up from watching TV. I think about the characters and I don't think about the characters when I think about part eight. I, I mean, I know there are characters. There's, uh, there's the log. I mean, what am I saying? Lumberjack, not lumberjack, woodsman. The woodsman. The woodsman. The woodsman. The woodsman. And there's so many amazing visuals. I mean, to be able to go back in time and see all this. And there's so many incredible, it's, it is a masterpiece. But when I think about the episodes, I would rather, I think I'd rather be with Ed and Norma and have that moment again with the, that they love each other. Cause it's twin peaks. I don't know. I, mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I really thought, I thought I was going to, I, you know, I wrote this before uh, we, 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 we met here and I said, like, I'm the only one that's going to go with part 15. Everybody else is going to go with part eight. I'm going to be, you know, I'm just going to try to shake things up here, but uh, I guess wow. we did Josh. We yes, asked, we we're did. clearly, we're clearly in for another Lynch madness. Now we're all <laughs> Because this is exactly what happened in that first one. Oh, where that's right. Oh, my the God. drive and fire walk with me got kicked out right away. Wow. Well, Joe, I don't even know where this is going oh because God. I really thought part 17 was going to go farther. So, I mean, I this don't know where we're going. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is anyone's game because, you know. That's it. I mean, part eight was my clear favorite by far. Yeah. yeah. No I, John Thorne and others, None. I think, would Zero. assume that would be part eight. I think most people would be like, oh, why don't you even listen to this? It's going to be part eight. Why well, not? In some ways, you almost have to pull part eight out. It is yeah. so. I know. I think that's, I mean, I believe your your rationale. It, it makes sense. But I think also a little part of you maybe wanted to make this a little more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> the lost highway all yeah. right we're, we're moving on we got part 13 which got an 8.5 that is a great episode you have uh jacoby and um uh, nadine 
kind of uh, showing their feelings for each other. Um, we also have more of the Audrey and Charlie leaving the house. Um, also, um, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. The arm wrestling. Yeah. Oh, the big arm wrestling scene. That's the big one. Yes, the big arm wrestling scene. Um, up against part two, which got an 8.8. .8. Um, in part two, I'm sure everybody, I mean, this is James's really cool moment uh, at the end. A, a lot of things happen in this one. I, I think everybody knows what happens in part two. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I have to go into that. Um, we're going to start with Joel on this one. Hmm. This actually is a little little challenging. I I will go with what my original decision was going to be, which is part two. I think um, the all of the stuff with the Red Room is just fascinating. I love the introduction of the evolution of the arm. Mm -hmm. the scene with Mr. C and Daria is really disturbing and well done. Um, trying to think what else is in part two. That, that th Those are the things that really stick out to me. I mean, part one and two, sometimes tend to get a little conflated in my mind because we watched them together. And I think when I first watched it, I didn't even know where one ended and the other began because mm. it's seamless. They didn't have a credit sequence. But I think of part one and part two, uh, I'd probably give part two the edge. Uh, not that we're putting those two up against each other yet, but yeah, part two, I, uh, I would go. Part 13, um, I really like the atmosphere of it, that beautiful shot at the end with Ed watching the traffic go by outside of his uh, gas station. Very Edward Hopper-esque. Don't, don't forget about uh, James singing J Just You at the Roadhouse. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. <laughs> Who could forget that? Um, it's a very like night-heavy episode, as I remember it in my mind. Um, although you have all this stuff with uh, Dougie almost getting poisoned and all that in Vegas, too. Yeah, I just think of it. I think of the end of the episode a lot when I think of that one, and it's strong. But for part two would be my pick for that. All right, part two. Ben, what do you got? Well, I agree with him. Part two. I mean, for me, it's the Cooper and Laura exchange. I mean, we've waited 25 years for them to meet up again, and Laura shows her her light face and. And yeah, I guess, I mean, for me, that holds a lot. I mean, I just always wanted to see them come together again. You know, Cooper's maybe been in the Red Room for 25 years, and now Laura's here again to, uh, you know, kind of say it's he's time, he can go, he can leave now. So to me, I know that's only, uh, you know, that's probably a scene or only a moment, but it sticks in my head, and I, I just have to go with that one, I think. And uh, Josh, any thoughts on this? So I would have picked actually part 13 would have been my choice though. I do love part two for many reasons. A, I think it is the strong, one of the strongest finishes from a roadhouse perspective, the chromatics playing shadow at the end of that episode. I remember when that, when I first watched that live on TV, I was like, Oh, this is going to be twin peaks now. Like I felt like that music just drove it home and it didn't have a lot of music in it except for American girl that had played earlier yeah. on in the episode. And I still don't find that song very rewarding or pleasant to listen to. So the chromatics was a great moment. Um, but part 13 for me, I just feel like, uh, that the Audrey stuff at the end about the existentialism, let's like go to it in here. I just, mm. I, you know, that's when Anthony Sinclair tries to kill Cooper in that episode. Yeah. And yet again, his goodness reaches out and it's a perceived mercy that happens in there when Cooper comes up to brush the light speckles off of, of Sinclair's shoulders or whatever it is that draws Cooper to the man's shoulders. That motion, it's a perceived mercy that changed Anthony Sinclair's heart. And I just, I love those moments in, in the return. And come on, the arm wrestling scene. Mm. Dude, there are very few moments of brutality that are so funny. The idea that this band of, you know, scoundrels would choose their leader on the basis of who is the best arm wrestler in the room said everything about what was about to happen to America after 2017. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I feel like we're basically living in the world where the best arm wrestler wins. So, 
Awesome. So can I change my answer if I want to? No, not part two moves on. <laughs> what, if, what, if, what, if Josh, what if Josh convinced me? We also say in part 13 that Dr. Amp or Jacoby and Nadine have a moment at the store. And it's a beautiful thing where I think he just sees her, her shovel in the, at the window and they come out. And I'll and give this up to you, Ben. What are you, are you going to change your mind? I'll give you, I'll give it to you if you want to. I mean, I, have we ever done that before in, in no. these uh, madnesses? Have no. we ever changed it? <laughs> no. I think it's a courtroom now. Wow. I, I, I will allow it. Here's I the question. Yeah, I was going to say the question is can the person who wants to change it be the judge of it? Or should Brian be the judge? I, I will allow a change okay. <laughs> since this is our last madness. Um, but, Ben, it's up to you. If you want to change it, um, I don't know. There are so, I mean, when I think about 13, there are so many great moments. The conga line is funny. The wrestling is very intense going back and forth. And then you have, uh, yeah, you, you have uh, the Dougie coffee shop scene and Shelly yeah. says goodbye to Becky for the last time. Does she? Wow. I forgot that. Ben, uh, here, I'll give it to you. Three. We got to move on. One, <laughs> two. I'm going to change it. <laughs> You're changing it? To part 13. I shocked the world. I know. We got to mix this thing up. All right. I, I, I love the whole Cooper done. and Laura scene, but if that's the only thing I care about and I, the rest of the episode didn't, didn't mean anything to me, I feel like I should go with the one that All right. has more emotion for me. So 13 gets it. We're moving on. We're still, <laughs> we're still around two. Uh, we have part 14, which has got a 9.1 up against part five. Part five I already went through, but part 14 does have a lot of amazing moments. And I think I say that about every part, but they all kind of do. Um, this one, Andy gets a visit by the giant and basically um, gets visions of what could possibly happen and what he should do. Jack Rabbit's palace comes into place. Um, uh, Gordon Cole tells us about his dream, which is very cool. And uh, Diane um, gets shot and turns into an orb. Or goes back to the red room, I should say. Um, so a lot does happen in fourteen. No, wait, that's sixteen. That's 16. Oh, that's sixteen. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're right. Fourteen. We learn about the blue rose. Yes. Yeah. No, that. that's Tulpa. that's part twelve. I think. No, fourteen. They, oh, I um, know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, we learn sorry. about the story. Tammy about the, and yes. Albert. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So I think I got those two scenes confused. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for correcting me. Um, Josh, we're gonna go with you first. This is a tough one. You know, I just laid out a pretty good argument for part five, but I'm going to go with part 14 on this one. I feel like a, you know, we also forgot Lissy is the Roadhouse performance. And I think that is the best song that came out of the return. Oh, Wild yeah. Wild West, like I still play that song in my car when I drive. That's, that song is on fire. Um, but the, the Gordon Cole section on who is the dreamer, um, I think that that basically tells you how to think about the entire the return like i feel like that's where <laughs> lynch basically made it easy and said okay this is how you think about it wrap a frame wrap that as a frame around what you're what mm -hmm. you're looking at and then the jack rabbit's palace stuff i love that scene the everything that andy saw including by the way the phone pole outside of carrie page's house is extremely important because it tells you that what happens in part 18 is part of the plan like he tells Andy as a character, this is all part of the plan and here's your part in it. Make sure you go do it. Same thing he, we find out he does with Freddie and, and the green glove of, of power. <laughs> um, and then of course, Sarah Palmer murders that man uh, in, the, in the Elks bar in the same episode. I just, I feel like it's just a strong episode from the very beginning to the very end. And it's uh, got some of my favorite scenes, so. Awesome. So 14 goes to Josh, Ben. What do you got for us? I would agree with part 14. I mean, Sarah at the bar, uh, Jack Rabbit's palace the, uh, with the, uh, all the police officers, Cole's dream. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in there. All right. So part 14, we'll move on. But before we do that, Joel, do you have anything to say? Uh, I would probably s stick with part five, uh, just for the, all the reasons I said before. But I like part 14 a lot. And if an episode is going to be part five, I, that's one of the ones that I'd be most okay with doing. Hmm. Um, yeah, I love all the dreamy stuff and it feels like the beginning of the climax in some way. Like we've had a long period of episodes after part eight where not, as you know, there, some stuff happened, but it was sort of a more low key phase of Twin Peaks. And with this one, things start to kick up and get kind of exciting towards the end. Cool. 
All right. So uh, part 14 moves on. We're going to have part three, 8.5 rating up against uh, one of the bigger ones. Part 18 was an 8.8. Uh, 18, we know what happens there. Everybody should know what happens there. Do we? Do we know what happens there? <laughs> what well, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know, but we know what happened. What we saw on the screen, we know, but we right, don't know what it. happened. Um, but part three, just a, a quick recap. Um, Dougie comes out into the real world, or Cooper comes out into the real world as Dougie. The casino scene happens. Uh, we also have, I think that's the big scene. Uh, oh, the purple mansion stuff. Are you oh, the, with Dougie yes. Out? Yep, the purple world there. It's all about the bunnies. We're going back to the old case file. Um, we're, Kimmy ate one of the bunnies when she was pregnant because she had gas. You know, big, big moments um, that yeah. really perpetuate the, the story forward. Um, we're going to start with Ben on this one. It's interesting because I like both of them so much. Both of them have very Lynchian, strange world kind of a feel to it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's things I like about part 18 where it's very, you know, Lost Highway is my favorite David Lynch film. And there's a whole feel of Lost Highway where Carrie and, and, and Cooper are kind of going down the road and maybe somebody's following them, maybe not. But I find myself going to part three. I mean, I love the whole Cooper and the purple world. And it's like he's going forward and then he's going backwards. And it's almost like in between our world and the Red Room, it seems like to me. And just that whole strange feeling of, you know, uh, Major Briggs head in the sky, and it's just, it's just, it's just wonderful. And you know, I find Dougie has grown on me a lot too. So to to have Dougie all of a sudden be in this, and he, he can't tie his own shoes, and he can't, he 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 happens to just uh, duck right when they're gonna try and shoot him, and you know, like I don't know, it's kind of grown on me. So I guess I really lean towards part three. Wow, I did not, ex I expected eighteen to take it. Uh, we're we're gonna go to Josh. This was a tough one because I too love part three. It's my favorite of the first four parts. Um, and I, I have loved Dougie Jones for quite a while now. Uh, I actually bought one of those stand-ups from Showtime mm -hmm. because I wanted to have one before they ran out of them. Uh, but I, I adore the Dougie Jones parts. Also in, in, uh, in part three, Mr. Jackpots is born. I don't know if mm -hmm. we talked about the casino you know, experience yep. of, of right. Cooper walking in and just pl starting to play this game of call for help. <laughs> Who's going to come to my aid when I call for help and All I right. can't explain what I need. And it starts to happen. It's an exciting episode, but I'm going to go with part 18. I feel like part 18 is, uh, you know, one of the most emotional and tense uh, episodes of any of them there. And it's, it's like stretched out, you know, it was, awful watching that episode live mm. when, when it was on it was just the tension in the last 10 minutes of that episode yeah. is some of the worst that i think i've ever experienced watching a television show since the end of the sopranos probably maybe breaking bad got close twin peaks blew them all away uh wow, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll always love part 18 all right i love it another great tie joel wh what do you got for us uh i'll break it in favor of part 18 i think part three if it was somehow just the purple world stuff might actually sneak past. Um, after that point, I, you know, I love all the Dougie Jones stuff. I think Jade is great. She's really plays like a great kind of straight woman to the Dougie character. But uh, the, the real thrill of that episode is in the, the beginning, the first 15, 20 minutes. Uh, that's up there with anything Lynch created with his mm -hmm. digital shorts like Rabbits or Darkened Room. Uh, I just absolutely love that stuff. But overall, part 18, uh, we'll have more opportunity to think about, to talk about, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. All right, part 18 moves on. All right, the last part of round two, the last seed, if you will. Uh, we have part nine, which got an 8.5 rating, up against part seven, an 8.8, nine. A pivotal moment is, uh, is when... Um, now I'm going to, I had it. Is this part nine you're talking or part seven? Yeah, part part nine, I would say the most pivotal is Jerry, his foot talks to him. Oh, major, uh, Mrs. Briggs. Um, the chair. The chair, one of the biggest, yeah. Uh, big pivotal moment in that one. And then part seven is Diane comes face to face with Mr. C and says to Gordon Cole, 
this is there's something wrong here. This is not him. This is not who, you know, this person did something horrific to me, and I th- there's something going on here. And that was very emotional, I thought. So we're going to start off with uh, Joel. Uh, this is a pretty easy one for me. I would say part seven is, uh, it's the first episode of the series that really big time kind of leads back to the original series in a lot of ways where they're looking, or the film, where they're looking at the Annie's writing in the diary. Ben is talking to, uh, he has that great scene with Beverly where they're walking around and you, you almost wonder, is that Josie in the walls or something? where they're hearing the noise and yeah, the uh, he says yeah. something to her. Yeah, he says something to her about Laura and he's looking at the old great Northern key. And mm-hmm. there's some other stuff in that episode too that now is slipping my mind. I, I well, they find Major Briggs's body and all of that, but it just, it's got so many, epi- it's got so many parts to it that are kind of calling back to the old series and bringing all of Twin Peaks together to the point where it feels like a very conscious, like they shaped it that way. A uh, part nine to me is I, I do love all the Briggs stuff. There's a kind of a nice mellow feel to it, but we're talking here about the build up and the come down from uh, part eight, and mm-hmm. I like the build up more than the come down from it. All right, nice. So one for for part seven. Uh, ben, what do you got? I will go with part nine. And I'll go part nine because I love the Andy Lucy uh, discussing red or beige chair. I like the whole Briggs chair. I mean, just I mean, this is the only time we see Mrs. Briggs, and to have that moment to have with her, and and tell basically kind of fulfilling scenes from season two where uh, Major Briggs tells Bobby that you know you're going to be a great man someday, and and here it is. It's like you know, you know, Mrs. Briggs is saying you know you weren't ready for this yet, but here you you are ready now. So that I thought that was a great one. Matthew Lillard's performance about you know just he just wanted to go scuba diving. I thought that was a great <laughs> performance. I loved it I and mean, stuff. So and then Cole and Diane smoking. I mean I think that's ad libbed. I love those kind of those moments where nobody's talking and there's tension between Tammy and Diane and and then uh, Cole just wants a cigarette and stuff. So I don't know. Those are all great moments for me. So I, I'll go with part nine. I love it. Josh, tiebreaker. What do you got? So I'm going to tell you what I love about part seven before I tell you my answer, which is going to be part nine. Um, <laughs> I love the Ike the Spike scene. I, lo- I love that that's where Cooper actually acts for one of the first times besides just drawing on a, on the page. And, and, you know, that, I feel like that's a nice uh, release. It's a nice milestone in, in what happens there. Um, you've got uh, that great scene of the sweeping in the roadhouse that went on for a little over two minutes and pissed a ton of TV critics off. I always love it when TV critics get pissed off. That's something that makes me very interested, <laughs> but the emotional release, and again, I keep going back to this. I seek out these emotional releases when I watch the return of Betty Briggs and what she tells Bobby and how that echoes the scene from Major Briggs and Bobby in, in the, I think it's season two. I could be wrong about that. Mm. Um, but it's so important, and there are so few lights inside of the Twin Peaks storyline. It's mostly dark. It's, it's, it's a really dark area of the narrative, what happens in Twin Peaks. So these little moments where these characters can come together and find some kind of kindness, I, I find them to be extremely valuable. Uh, Jerry Horn fighting his foot, man, that's, that's also one of the funniest uh, scenes <laughs> in, in, in the episode. Uh, I feel like there's another one that I'm missing. Uh, the Fusco brothers, eh. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I feel like that the, the chair scene with the, with the Briggs family was the winner, the reason why that one for me. Mm. So part nine moves on. Love it. All right. The last seed of Brown. Oh, wait, one, one thing before we move on. Just a little interesting note. Those are, I believe, the only two scenes where uh, Ben Horn and his assistant, Beverly Page, are looking, are looking for the source of that ringing sound. Right. Yes, so that's, right. it's part seven and part nine where they're looking for that ringing hum and they yeah. both kind of surround part eight. <laughs> so it's oh. almost like the reverberations oh. of what I happened like in that. part eight are I love leading that. into the two, the two episodes. It's I really never cool. thought about that. That is yeah. really something. All right. I, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. We're learning new things as we're going along here. Uh, part four, which got an 8.6 up against part one and 8.7. Part four, um, we get to see um, uh, uh, David Duchovny comes back as, um, 
I'm I'm having a quarantine. Denise Bryson. Denise Bryson. Um, we have the blue scene between uh, Gordon Cole. Doesn't get any bluer. Albert doesn't get any bluer. <laughs> Very famous scene there. Lucy discovers what cell phones are. Um, and a lot more things will happen, which you guys will discuss. Up against part one, we're going to start off with Ben. Ben, huh? Ben. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, one does kind of get meshed up together with two in some ways. It's, it is hard to know to separate it because it does, I think Joel said it, it kind of, in the original one, it kind of just keeps going. And uh, I have to go with part four. I love the whole uh, Dougie saying hello, and then you meet D Denise Bryson again after all these years, and you should fix your heart. You get the Wally Brando uh, mm. scene, which I think is, is a fun little scene. Um, Dougie doing his thumbs up with his son, uh, Sonny Jim. And that, that it's kind of comical, too. I love when he goes to breakfast, and he doesn't know what to do, and Sonny Jim is helping him with breakfast. Uh, and then, um, what else? I guess, yeah, uh, Albert and uh, Agent Preston and Cole confront Mr. C for the first time. And yeah, so there's just so many great moments. So I'd have to go with part four. All right, nice. Uh, Joel, what do you got for us? I would go with part one. Uh, I think part four is a lot of fun. And uh, I enjoy the Dougie, the Wally Brando and all of that. I like the scenes in the sheriff's station kind of warming us back up to the town again. But uh, part one, I, I really think it's bold and fascinating how they take us back into Twin Peaks without really taking us into Twin Peaks. We have a few scenes set in the town, but the bulk of that episode is Buckhorn in New York. And the New York stuff is just really vivid and uh, very, very memorable. It, th that to me is the strongest, is their strongest kind of hook in relaunching the return. I think if it weren't for those scenes, the whole thing would feel a little too scattered and mushy, like where are we going with this for several episodes? But that gives it this tight opening that everyone can latch onto right away. And of course it echoes the viewer themselves sitting there watching the screen, waiting for something to happen. So I think on the strength of those scenes primarily, but also just the kind of general interest in telling a story that isn't really much set in Twin Peaks. And it feels a lot like, um, like almost like he's doing another Mulholland Drive pilot where we're meeting all these characters in distant places from one another mm. and not sure how it's going to tie all tie together yet. I love this. This is like a game full of ties. Um, <laughs> Josh, break this tie for us. What do you got? This is a really tough one. Uh, I agree with everything both of you just said about each of these episodes. Uh, the glass box scene in part one, Man, is there anything better in a in a first episode of a show? Uh, I, I don't I don't know, um, but I'm gonna go with part four, um, and the, the reason why uh, it's a very simple episode, all things considered. Very few things really happen that are super dramatic. I love the entire experience of Cooper getting out of the casino, getting home, finally arriving home, and his wife just slaps the shit out of him. I think that <laughs> is so funny. Um, remember Lucy gets scared by the cell phone as well. Uh, Bobby Briggs, that reaction uh -huh. he has as he sees Laura's photo on the table is a huge emotional rush that we all experience from a nostalgia perspective. It was a great injection of nostalgia at the right moment where you're, we're all thinking like, what happened to, to our Twin Peaks? Uh -huh. What is this that we're watching? This is yeah. not Twin Peaks. And then it, it has a nice little injection in there. Um, I feel like the, the stuff in the prison speaks for itself, although I will point out it's really cool that the Mr. C speaks in the same low monotone voice that the the Co that Cooper speaks in in part 17 when he's mm. uh, narrating over it, which is kind of an interesting uh, callback. Uh, but, you know, I, I just feel like from a uh, satisfaction perspective, again, that's the only way I can judge these. I'm going to go with part four. I, I, I really, truly love that episode. Now, wow. Josh, have you picked the winner in every bracket so far? I think I have, actually. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and we're going to take a quick break for our sponsor, Blue Rose Magazine, your one-stop shop for all things Twin Peaks. Um, as you can see right now, you can get yourself issues 14 and 15 of the Blue Rose Magazine for only $17.99. Fantastic deal. Also, a big one, our book, Twin Peaks Unwrapped the Book with Mark Frost, Conversations with Mark Frost, for only 
$49.98 two-pack. That's a great deal. Also, you can get yourself some back issues of Blue Rose Magazine. Uh, you can pre-order Laura's Ghosts, which is on sale right now for $24.99 from $29.99. Uh, you can buy Conversations with Mark Frost separately if you'd like. If you already own our book or you already own Mark Frost, you can get our book. You can do that. Um, the 30th anniversary edition, $9.99, Blue Rose Magazine. Fantastic issue. Well worth it's a great keepsake. Uh, a must buy. Also, the woman of Lynch, we've had those ladies on the podcast. It's a fantastic book. If you do not have it, you gotta get it. Um, but you can get that and all and everything else. TwinPeaksMag.com. You're supporting a local publisher. Uh, Scott Ryan, and you're supporting all the writers and authors um, that have graced these pages. So support them at bluerosemag.com. We're going to throw to commercial, and we'll be back with round three of season three madness. Are you having a hard time finding a good book to read about Twin Peaks? Did you finish binge watching Twin Peaks in quarantine and now you're looking for more? If so, we have the book for you. Twin Peaks Unwrapped The Book Based off the popular show from the 1990s, read about the making of each episode from over 100 cast and crew members. This book covers Season 1, Season 2, Firewalk With Me, and Season 3. But wait, there's more! This book has commentary from the community and the host from the wildly popular podcast, Twin Peaks Unwrapped. Order now! Supplies are very limited. Only $25.99 plus shipping and handling. Go to bluerosemag.com today. So we're going to round three. Part 16, up against part 11. Uh, ben, we're going to start you off. I guess, hmm, so we have, the, we back to part 11 with the vortex for coal and um, the, map. the Hawks map and the yeah, Mitchum yeah. brothers uh, having cereal that I liked. Um, and then 16, where Mr. C and Richard are at, at the rock and Richard gets electrocuted. And then we have the FBI, I am the FBI Cooper. Mm, this is tough. This is really tough. I'm sorry, I'll, I, I'll get an answer here. 16 or 11 here. You know what? I, uh, I think I'm still going with 11 because I just love the whole Dougie delivering the box to the Mitchum brothers and that whole thing. I just. It, it gets me more. Even though I love Cooper waking up in the whole FBI stuff, I think it's got to go to a part 11. All right, part 11. And Joel, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to go with part 11 as well, actually. I think part 16 is pro obviously more important to the narrative overall. It's got some of the bigger moments. But part 11 is just a beautifully structured episode. And honestly, that is decisive for me. I just, I love how the first half is all of these escalating tension scenes, one after the other after the other. And then boom, halfway through it breaks, it goes to Vegas and I'm pretty sure it never comes back. It spends the whole second half in Vegas telling that one story. And mm -hmm. I love that juxtaposition of the buildup of tension and then this kind of relaxing, they even got that song, the leave, that version of Leaving Las Vegas playing as he's kind yeah. of, coasting down the strip and even though he's maybe about to be shot it's not nearly as tense as anything in the first half and i just think uh with the editing of the series sometimes he finds kind of awkward uh, assemblies of scenes and sometimes they just lock together and create this little unit that works so beautifully so for me it's definitely part 11 as a standalone episode Cool. So part 11 does move on, but Josh, you got anything to say before we move I, on? I've been defeated in my bracket now. I would have picked, <laughs> oh. picked 16, but I'm, I'm totally fine with 11 winning. Hey, that Bobby Briggs scene where he runs out into the road and the girl's throwing mm. up, I feel like that is another one of those meta scenes through which you can view the whole show and be like, okay, there's elements of there 
in, in that entire experience that you can apply to multiple different places in the return. It's a very, very important episode and I'm okay to, to lose out on that one. I hope you realize what a special person you have dining with you. He saved my life. All right, so part 11 moves on. We have part 15 up against part 13 and Joel, we're gonna start with you. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to choose part 13. I think, uh, <laughs> I almost wanna make my comments after I see what other people <laughs> pick, but, uh, cause I have a couple things to say that. Okay. Uh, Let's but, do that um, then. Yeah, you're I more don't want them. I don't want them to shape other people's opinions. All right, so <laughs> that's fine. We'll stick with the, you. Got you. You're putting it down for thirteen. Yeah, I'll uh, share Josh. my reasons after. Okay, it. Josh. Josh, what do you got? Uh, I'm going with part fifteen on this one. So Ben, you're going to have to break the tie <laughs> before, before we talk <laughs> about why. Neither one of you guys are going to help me to make this decision. Wow! Oh, wow. You yeah. Do it on your own. They put <laughs> Ben in. Pickle. This they is a tough people. one. This is a really hard one because there's it a lot is. of great things going on in part 13. And part 13 was the one that uh, I got persuaded to change my – was that right? I changed yeah. my vote at the last second. Remember all, remember all the release conversation? Mm -hmm. Remember all those great oh, arguments? Oh, yeah, all those great moments. Uh, oh, yeah, it was, that was 15, or is it? 15. Yeah, 15, that's what it was. So, yeah, Ed and Norma and – Mr. C and Agent Jeffries meeting up and Richard and Dougie getting electrocuted and the log lady dies. Ah, oh, ah, oh, this is really hard. I got This is really, really hard. I can't, I have to make a decision because there's it's nobody tough. else here now. This is yeah, it's oh, you. This is you, man. You're 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 deciding. Oh, Ben. I forgot who I actually forgot what Joel and and Josh said. So so I voted I guess, for part fifteen. Joel voted for part thirteen. I actually think I'm gonna go with part thirteen. Surprisingly, I think. All right, Ben, going thirteen. Ah, oh, this is in? tough. <laughs> it's a tough one. Locking tough thirteen one. in. Am I locking it in? <laughs> lock in, lock. Can I just? Can we skip this and grab a bracket? <laughs> uh, All right. So, you know, you can no, still no, watch them both. Though. That's yeah. true. All right. All right, part so um, uh, so part thirteen is going on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Joel, so Joel, what do, what do you want to talk about now? Let's so I was going to say two things. One of which is kind of petty, and the other one of which is very controversial. So I'll say the petty one first. I have to punish part fifteen for beating part eight. That's just a, <laughs> that's just a fact. So that's the petty part that I can't yes. justify. And then the more the the honest part that's kind of controversial is the Ed and Norma scene. Um, you know, it's grown on me somewhat. It did not blow me away the first time I saw it. And it's never really totally worked for me the way it works for others. I don't know why I, I want it to work for me, but it, 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 uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't quite, uh, shake me up. I, I, it, maybe it's a tragic view of life or something, but that, that scene with Ed at the end where he's watching Norma talk to Walter and then we see him alone at the end sitting in his gas station to me is much more poignant than the kind of swelling music and them coming together and all of that. So uh, that's just my kind of personal take on those, that juxtaposition where um, for whatever reason, I just, uh, I love that ending of part 13 and that image. And uh, to me that lingers longer in some ways than I you know, love Otis Redding too, but I don't know. Mm. <laughs> that's totally fine. Anybody else want to say anything about these episodes before we move on or? No, because I lost. All right. <laughs> I know. It's, I'm still. I'm still like debating whether I picked the right choice. You, you picked the right choice. It is. You picked it. Is. Uh, picked it from the heart. Starting positions. We got part fourteen up against part eighteen. Um, don't really need to tell you. We all know what happened in those parts. Uh, Josh, we're going with you first. Oh, part 18 with a bullet still for me. I'm, I'm going to part 18. That, part that was a tough one, but you know, it is what it is. All right. And then Ben. These are getting tough. I know. Um, 
part 18, I think. I mean, it, it's true, Lynch. It's true, the road trip. And it. I think a lot of what, you know, Josh had said, it, it, there was that, you, you're watching the clock as you know that you're running out of time for that episode. And I do remember it was like, I don't know if it was like 10 minutes left or what, but it's like, you're still driving. Where are you going? How are we going <laughs> to wrap up everything in 10 minutes? Mm-hmm. And I should realize we're probably not going to wrap things up really. But it's, it. It, it's true Lynch and, and that, that whole sense of tension and that feeling and, and I don't know. Yeah. I go with that part 18. Part 18 moves on, but Joel, do you have anything to say about these two episodes? So yeah, I, I, same thing. That's just uh it's, it's masterful direction. It's where you feel the series become a Lynch movie in a lot of ways for the first time. Like I know Frost played some role in all of that, but, uh, the Lynch sensibility of like late Lynch storytelling really takes over in this episode. And I dig it, but I do love part 14 in some ways. It's the more, um, like you could settle in and watch part 14 and probably have more fun in a way than part 18, but part 18 is just, there's something hypnotic and fascinating about it. I don't think there's anything fun in part 18 that I would say, Oh, that's fun to watch. It's great. um, uh, Burning up the guns in the uh, in yeah, the that's body. still weird. That's weird. <laughs> I was at the beginning of part eighteen. I do love that Dougie goes home or Dougie two point oh. Uh, oh I, yeah, that's the one like, moment. <laughs> <laughs> Dougie the 2. one happy 0. moment. <laughs> it's all downhill from there. It really oh. is. Yes. FBI. I'm Special Agent Dale Cooper. So part 18 moves on. We have part nine up against part four. Uh, Ben, Mm. I'm putting you on the spot. You're going first on this one. Uh, So we've got four with uh, Dougie saying hello and uh, fix your heart with Denise. And then we, you said we have part nine, right? So we have, this is the chair. This is the chair. chair. Ah, I've, it's, a, it's a tough I feel, one. I'm more writing on part four, and I feel like there's more scenes that I liked, whether it be Dougie and his son thumbs up, and and the, uh, he doesn't get any bluer and confronting Mr. C. So I feel like there's more moments that I love about part part four. So I guess I'll go with part four. Part four for Ben. Nice. All right, uh, Joel, what do you got for us? Um. I'm actually, this was one I didn't think about much because I didn't pick either of these ones for their first bracket. Um, I think actually, I, to, a little bit to my surprise, I would probably go with part nine. I think when you kind of remove it from its maybe a little bit of a letdown after part eight, there's just a nice kind of mood throughout it. Uh, the the Bobby stuff kind of holds it together, all the chair stuff with Major Briggs and just kind of feels like you're letting out a deep breath after part eight. Mm. Um, part four, yeah. enjoy a lot of the moments. It doesn't, uh, I like, I don't have any kind of objective criticisms of part four, but it, uh, I don't know if drags is the right word, but a lot of the Dougie stuff to me is more fun in a way. Once he goes on, he's interacting with more, like this is kind of setting up Dougie and, you know, there's that long sequence where he's sitting in the office with the casino owner and stuff. And it's funny and it works, but uh, it makes me a little restless, too, I think. <laughs> so part nine. Part nine. Another tie. Uh, and also that's the foot one, right? Where the foot talks to yeah. Billy. That's yeah. hilarious. So, yeah. So yeah. Josh, like break this tie. Wow, this is a tough one because I do love part nine quite a bit. But I'm going with part four. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna push that ahead for all the reasons I said before. I, it's one of my favorite of the first four episodes. What's all this about? Message from Margaret Lanterman to Hawk concerning Agent Cooper. All right, we're getting very close, gentlemen. Very close mm. to the end here. Um, we're gonna now nominate the final two episodes. So it's going to get harder, Ben. It's going to get harder. <laughs> um, part 11 up against part 13. Mm. Um, now, part, it's um, weird. Part 11 came from the beginning and part 13, I mean, they both made it through. 
Um, pretty close. You guys were pretty much on the page for 11 and 13. Yeah, 11 you guys all voted for. And 13, it was some of you weren't for it. So this is going to be interesting. Um, we're going to start off with Josh. Okay, so uh, I'm going to vote for part 11 on this one. Um, I feel like that pie scene at the end completely elevates this to a different place uh, than uh, almost any other episode. So uh, I do love part 13. It's got some great stuff in it, especially the Audrey scene. It's actually one of my favorites of her scenes. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to go with part 11 just for the emotional response that I have from it still when I watch it. All right. Part 11. And Joel, what do you got? What's the Audrey scene in part 13? So that's where it's the existential scene where uh, it's the little girl down the lane statement. It's like Ghostwood in here. And she okay. starts to question. Like she sits down for the first time. She, She's she not becomes, at the door yet, though. No. That's part no. 15. Okay. Correct. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I would go with part 11. Uh, and again, it has to do with the structure, the overall shape, because part 11, I can remember as an entire episode. I could almost tell you every scene that comes after the other. Part 13, it's a little more vague. It blurs into other episodes and stuff. There, there's parts of it I think are very strong, but it just doesn't stand out to me as a distinct unit the way that part 11 does. Another piece of pie for our friend. Part 18 up against part four. Uh, we're going to start with Joel. And no competition for me here. I, I don't think part four is that uh, strong of an episode compared to part 18, which kind of carries the whole... I mean, in a way it carries it. In a way it almost makes it into something totally new. No pun intended, Carrie Page, I just realized. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I mean, I guess we haven't talked much about Carrie either, but that's just such an interesting development to bring Laura and Shirley back in that persona. Uh, the only thing that kind of makes it hard for me to judge part 18 is probably like at least one or two of you, um, I knew the ending. So there, I never had that yeah. sense of shock Palmer House. That, that many people have had watching it of like, oh my God, what's happening? I'm so disoriented. This is like, I knew that was coming the whole time and I thought it would come earlier. So when it was the last <sighs> 10 minutes of the show, I was like, oh, I guess I know how this, how the show ends then. Yeah. Uh, it's still a very strong scene conceptually and I like it, but unfortunately I was a little bit robbed, I guess by myself for looking at the spoiler, but I was a little bit robbed of the full shock of it all right so 18 um ben we're going to you it's gonna be part 18 same thing i mean uh, yeah i remember being I, it was like where's laura palmer like she i was hoping that cheryl lee would be in this more but i think it's more satisfying that we, we have to wait till the end and then it's not even really laura palmer or another version of her so i think that yeah it's just it's just a powerful uh part i'd have to stick with part 18 all right. It would have been another suite. I would have picked uh, part 18 yeah. as well. So Cheryl Lee, after part two, the only times we see her are the portrait, I mean, obviously the beginning of each episode, but the portrait with the two angels around it and Andy's vision and her appearing in the doorway to Gordon Cole. Is that it? She's in but 17 those... too. Like she's Of course, starts... yeah, Firewalk with the Firewalk. And part eight in, in the bubble. In the, in the... Right, okay, yes. Okay, so she, yeah, they... Oh, somewhat yeah, consistently yeah. sprinkle her throughout. Okay. Is Sarah Palmer here? Who? Sarah Palmer. No, there's no one here by that name. All right. So we've made it to the last round. We have part 11 up against part 18. I did not see this happening. I actually <laughs> thought part 8 would have made it all the way. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I thought part... it would be part 8 versus 18. Yeah, me too. That's really what I thought it was going to be. Um, but I love this. This is something we did not foresee happening, which is great. Uh, makes it interesting. Uh, ben, we're going to start off with you. Wow. I had to give you the final. <laughs> I had to start with me. I mean, I think it's, I have a feeling we're all going to say the same thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Part 18. I mean, I think it's funny because I'm, a, part of me is like, well, there's so much not Twin Peaks. It almost 
most of the cast isn't even there, but there's something special about Cooper going down that road with Carrie and, you know, trying to go on maybe a new adventure. And, I, you know, we didn't talk much about Diane. Diane and him going to that hotel and then him coming out and it's a whole other hotel and she's gone and is he Richard now? I mean, to me, his true Twin Peaks is that it keeps the mystery alive. You don't know what's going to happen next. So mm. I got to stick with part 18. All right, 18. Uh, Joel, what do you got? Oh, I have to be the one to decide if I'm going to. Well, I guess not necessarily. Well, I haven't yet. <laughs> Josh could be a um, tiebreaker. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, I want to make it fun till the end. And, let, <laughs> and I feel like Josh could surprise us. But I, I just to be on and i love part 11 it is it's a top five episode for me i think 14 11 5 8 and 18 are my top five episodes but it's got to be part 18. all um, right and we haven't talked at all about the diane stuff either i think obviously that sex scene with her is super disturbing mm. um and, and it's i think and i haven't totally I haven't wrapped my head around a lot of the stuff in part 18 yet, three years later. Uh, a lot of the stuff with like the Richard and Linda idea and this idea that they're, are, are they summoning Judy? Like what does Judy have yeah. to do with all this, the Judy diner and all that? There's so much more to pick apart here. I think even just judging it as a piece of filmmaking or drama, it's very effective uh, in a totally different way than part eight like almost opposite. They're, they're kind of like two different visions of digital cinema. Part eight, using digital to kind of create all these worlds. And then part 18, almost using digital to strip it down. Mm. You know? and I find, so I find that really fascinating. And uh, there's just so much going on there. So yeah, it is part 18, but uh, part 11 is, is uh, worthy of making it. You know, so, not, not over part eight, in my opinion, yeah. but it's certainly worthy of getting to some sort of last contention. What year is this? So part 18 wins it. But Josh, before you know, we announced the winner, what was your thought about these two? It, it would have been a clean sweep. I think part 18 <laughs> is definitely the, the superior experience. I feel like it's the moment where they, they just the last second, they just pull the rug right out from under you all over again. And, and earlier mm. I referred to what happened in part 17 as a lie. And it, it, just because it's a lie doesn't mean it's not valuable. But when you start playing around with memories and you know calling fake news on things that happened in the past, trying to change the structure of what we know to be true, that has enormous repercussions. And in, in Cooper's story, we see this stripping away of all of these masks that he's put on himself to the point where he even sets his love of friends and family on a shelf when he says goodbye to Janie E and the Mitchum brothers finally, and, and Gordon Cole even, to the point where he has to shed that final layer of, of true love and devotion that he has with Diane to truly complete a mission hmm. that if we think about it at its core essence, he is taking an, a murdered girl who has now survived home to her ancestral rape house. And that mm. to me is like that, when you consider it like that is the least safe place that Laura Palmer could have been taken the day after right. she was supposedly murdered. What would Leland's response have been had he seen his daughter alive the day after he supposedly murdered her in a train car. It was the most dangerous place that he could have taken Laura Palmer. So the, the mission uh, in and of itself was doomed to fail from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so the, the idea that at the very end, he would be even stripped of the mission. And what he has one question left for the universe and everything inside of it. <laughs> and that is, what the hell year is it? Like, yeah. what, what am I even <laughs> doing here? This is crazy. Who are you? It's not even Laura Palmer, right? So everything's been stripped away from him. And that fade to black in the end is just so devastating. You can read whatever you want into it. I have my own interpretations. I'm sure you all do as well. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. They're all equally valuable and equally mm -hmm. valid. Uh, but to accomplish that with cinema on television, is uh it's a work of art i mean it's, it's still a work of art and we can all go back and rewatch it over and over and over again and have the the same similar or even a different experience so part 18 is a very special 
to me. And, jo and Josh, I never thought it was 1989. And, and now that you say that, I guess it could be. So you're saying it, it was right after Laura Palmer died that Cooper was bringing her back to the house. I mean, I don't Maybe. know about the time. I think he thought it was. Right? Yeah. I mean, that, what's the point of taking her home? If it's right. not to take her home to her mother right. when she should have been dead. That's you know? what I yeah. thought. Now. That's what I thought because we go past the, the diner and the to-go stuff is gone. It's the old diner, not the new diner. And yep. it's old. It's, everything looks older. I always thought it was. I always thought it was the future. Yeah. I always thought we were. Well, so in, you, you can actually, if you wanted to, go back and uh, track the cost of gasoline against mm -hmm. those times because they actually do show the price of gasoline at that Valero station. I've never done it. Didn't really care. But technically, I believe it's probably about the 2014-15 time frame. Interesting. That's, yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. I mean, 18 won it. I mean, I thought 8 could I thought 8 was going to get it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad it didn't. I mean, 8, you know, there was talk. Should we pull? I'm like, no, it is part of the series. It is part of a, a collective. There are, he calls them parts. I mean, so it is one yeah. long 18-hour... It's like choosing your favorite chapter out of a novel, yeah. though. Right. It's really hard. Yeah. It's, a, it's a hard thing to do. And it is a masterpiece, and I think it's brilliantly... I mean, like, it's, it's something that you, you got to somehow see on the big screen if you can. It's mm. just beautiful to see the, the light and, and just the, the whole beautiful scene. It's, it's something else, but, yeah, for me, it, it couldn't be number one. Mm. I thought it was going to go all the way, and I told Brian maybe to make it more suspenseful at the end, we should pick we should have to pick our favorite part of part eight <laughs> and rank that against each other. Yeah. Well, we can definitely yeah. talk about that. I'm not, it's easy for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, now let's say it. I would go with the atom bomb explosion. I think yeah, for sure. Just as a formal visceral visual experience, there's nothing like it. Yeah. I'm with you. That's, that would have been my yeah. choice. I, and especially the gold inside of the yeah. uh, atomic. I, I've actually mm. asked John to do a, a podcast on just that like eight second scene <laughs> where we actually drill into the gold ball and that's where the fireman lives inside the gold oh. ball. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine would have been the same thing. I, I, I have to imagine, Ben, you would have picked the same thing. Yep. Yeah, I always forget there's anything else there. I forget. Wait a minute. There's, there, there is a, <laughs> got the there's a beginning with the Vito uh, and the fireman. Uh, yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. The frog yeah. moth. I know the whole yeah. thing, but right. A lot <laughs> like does happen. A little happen. girl that lived down the lane there. So. Oh. Um, but thank you, gentlemen. I mean, this is our. Listen, I'll be fun. honest. We're gonna do. We're gonna do one more madness before we end the podcast in, in uh, the near future, and it will be bringing back everybody. Nice. <laughs> and we're going to do the four things. You know, now we have episode 18 versus the other three, and we're going to pick the ultimate Lynch thing. I don't know. We're, we'll come up with a clever name, and we'll bring everybody back. Uh, so Josh you know, will come back, Joel, uh, John Thorne, Maya. Um, I, here, I biggest uh, madness ever. Yeah, yeah. So is it part – it's it's part 18, Lost Highway, um, Episode 29 and episode two? Episode, yeah, episode two and episode 22 of season two. Right, so the finale. Be, yeah. yeah, and you're going to pick the best of those? That's, that's interesting. I don't know. <laughs> Should we do that? I mean, what do you guys Why think? Not? Why not? I think the fun part of it would be that you'd have so many people. If it was just four of us doing it, it would yeah. go kind of fast and be like that. But if yeah. you have everybody in and they can all kind of voice their opinion and turn it into a conversation, I think in that one, the number of people makes up for the lack of options. Right. Everybody's right. going with Lost Highway. It's Lost yeah. Highway Down. <laughs> we know what you're going with. <laughs> Man, I don't know how that was beaten or that beat the straight story. I really uh, don't. Uh, it, beat every, I, it beat my, and I love Lost Highway, but I picked yeah. a different movie every single bracket and it beat yeah. that movie. <laughs> I, I, I paid off Maya there. I paid her off. <laughs> and, <laughs> and was paying off people with Bitcoin, I think. Um, <laughs> Um, but thank you, gentlemen. Uh, before we go, uh, Josh, I know you've got a lot of stuff go going on. You want to share with anything? Um, just a couple things. So John Thorne and I have started a podcast called the In Our House Now podcast, an inquiry into Twin Peaks to return. We have six episodes out. We actually just published one on Audrey 
yesterday that is a two hour conversation where <clears throat> John has taken the six months that he's been writing this Audrey episode or article and we've broken it out into a phenomenal conversation that really digs into uh, all the areas of Audrey that you would ever want to think about know about and hopefully some that you hadn't thought about yet mm -hmm. I know I came away from that as like kind of enlightened John's mind is amazing when it gets going um, and then the other one is my book twin skeleton key to twin peaks I finally have a hardback version of it so uh, wow. maybe a little hard to see but 430 pages of scene by scene analysis from twin peaks the return a uh, few essays in there Jeff Lemire wrote an introduction if you like Jeff Lemire's uh, graphic novels he's also a huge twin peaks fan uh, and, and I've been blessed to to come to know him through our podcast so uh, that I have no idea when that's going to be available. I'm still copy editing and it's so expensive, uh, but it's all for charity. So I'm giving everything away to the David Lynch Foundation and the Krishna Murthy Foundation to benefit both of the creators of Twin Peaks, Mark Frost mm. and David Lynch. So nice. uh, that, that's what's going on with me. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to, to tell everyone. That is awesome, man. I'm, I'm so excited. I know uh, I will definitely pre-order and we'll, we'll definitely put it up on social media when that hits. Um, get the Thank word you. Out. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Joel Baca, what have you been up to? What's going on with your Patreon? Oh my gosh. Yeah, too much stuff in June. <laughs> it, uh, it all, J April, May was very focused on Journey Through Twin Peaks, new video essays on season three. I hit some of my goals. I still had a few chapters outstanding. And then I just kind of got diverted into so many different, I was doing the Patreon, I was starting a new Mad Men viewing diary. Um, I just launched a public podcast which is going to be sort of starting off built off of my, all the stuff I've recorded for Patreon. And uh, so, and I was started working again after a couple months of, you know, quarantine. So everything got scattered, but I am still trying to get those two missing uh, journey chapters out. Hopefully at least one of them this month, that's going to be on the collaborators of the original series. So Harley Payton um, and Bob Angles, but also, uh, at least a little bit on all the directors. So for the past six, seven months, I've had on my computer files for all of these movies that were directed by those Twin Peaks directors, like feature films that they made so that I can do a little side by side, even if it's just for a few seconds. So all of these files are finally gonna get utilized and put into play. And that's gonna be interesting. It'll free up a lot of space on my drive, that's for sure. <laughs> so hopefully that'll come this month. And yeah, the other big thing is finally just started to make my uh, public podcast lost in the movies it's i've got the introductory episode out it's just eight minutes me describing what the kind of mission of it's going to be it's going to be based around usually a single film review uh so it'll be a short podcast which i think will be fun to play with uh, 15 to 30 minutes usually just talking about one film there'll be a little intro and outro and that's for this year, that's going to be every couple of weeks. And I'm going to start with the before films, before sunrise, before sunset, before midnight. Um, people who are my patrons, when I released those episodes for them several years ago, they, they seem to enjoy those ones particularly. So I'm going to kick off the podcast with that and then cover a lot of different Ethan Hawke films up through November, which is his 50th birthday. So I thought that would wow. be kind of a fun way mm. to kick it off. And I'll also be taking little asides here and there to do um, left-wing political cinema and also Twin Peaks cinema where I talk about a film and dive into all of its connections to Twin Peaks. So there'll be little uh, hints of that throughout the summer and fall and then next year I'm going to start to branch off the podcast into several different feeds of different podcasts uh, including those two topics as well as a main one where I just cover a different film. Uh, at that point it'll probably be week to week but I'm starting off kind of slow taking some of my material that's been behind a paywall for years and releasing little pieces of it. And if anybody likes that and they want to support it, um, in addition to going to iTunes, writing a rate and review so that we, you know, it can actually start showing up. If you type it into Google, nothing comes up at this point. <laughs> like it doesn't Aww. even exist because it's so new and all of that. So if you like what I've recorded, if you've heard stuff in the past, give it a little like on there. And uh, you can become a patron on patreon.com slash lost in the movies where I have my whole Lost in Twin Peaks rewatch, which is now up to episode, I'm actually probably today gonna start preparing the episode 17 um, episode. So I'm more than halfway through the series at this point, going in depth on yeah. each episode. Man, hey, Joel, awesome. yeah. Joel, will you uh, review Born to be Blue, the Ethan Hawke movie about Chet Baker? 
by any chance? You know, I actually did see that, and I don't see that many new movies these days. I mean, that's probably what four or five years ago, but even yeah. in the past decade, um, it, is, it actually isn't one of the ones I reviewed. But I revisit that in the future. Yeah, for sure. I want to put a request in, my friend. Okay, I, I like it. I like I would, it. I would like to hear your, your thoughts on it. <laughs> Maybe 2021, we'll hear a little, awesome. <laughs> a little Chet Baker. <laughs> and actually, that was the theme song for my. Uh, Patreon podcast right. because it's get let's get lost lost in the movies combined with Laura Palmer saying uh, let's get lost together to James so I thought that was fun the theme song for this one is uh, from the Fastbinder sci-fi film World on Wires I've just always loved that little kind of mellow it's almost like a surf music thing from the 70s so I use that as the intro but yeah <laughs> awesome all right love it thank okay. you thank you Joel uh, Ben well, this is our second to last madness, um, and, and that's our, we did a little video thing. Hope everybody enjoyed it on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Well, and don't forget Mark Frost madness. We have to do all of his books. <laughs> I have them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't. I don't know if I have time to read them all. <laughs> it's taken. I've been doing that for the past year, literally really? the past year. Yes, and I've almost read all of them. But wow, <laughs> it is a time commitment. <laughs> Oh God, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe in the, sometime in the future. Yeah. We'll give the madness to you, and you can put it up. <laughs> yeah, on I have to do it by myself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not choosing my favorite Mark Frost chapter. So. <laughs> um, but if you have a comment, a question, or theory about today's show, give us an email at twinpeaksunwrapped at gmail .com. Follow us on Twitter at tw uh, Twin Peaks Unwrapped, and uh, like us on Facebook, Twin Peaks Unwrapped, and give us a five star review on iTunes. Or on Spotify, Google Play. Uh, get a copy of our book at bluerosemag.com. Supplies are very limited. Um, we have a merch table. All these notes will be in the show notes, but we have Twin Peaks Unwrapped face masks. So keep your face covered and in style. I mm, mean, it's pretty nice. cool. Uh, so T Public is doing that for us, which is really nice. And with all that being said, we'll, we'll see you guys later. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you all. Be well.